Hello and welcome to Milan on the banks of Lake Zurich for the fifth and final round of the EKZ Across Tour, the 37th edition of the Milan Cyclocross race here. Back to its traditional route down here on the athletics track. Thanks for joining me, Martin McDonald, in the commentary box today and alongside me, six-time Swiss Cyclocross champion, Kristen Huyle and after a great women's race that we've had we have a thrilling race ahead of us great cyclocross conditions and Christian rode the course yesterday with Simon Zana one of his old racing buddies and Simon was in no mood to hang around this is the start we head out of the athletics track before turning right into what is quite a technical section lots of little 180 bends and uh, some exposed tree roots as well after all the exposed racing that we've had we do have rain here this afternoon in Milan it's then onto this little bark track you just saw Simon there just hopping on the uh, railway sleepers and then it's on to the grass before we head into again another technical section we've got some planks and uh, we've seen some riders uh, managing to bunny hop them earlier on today but the rain uh, through the course of today's racing has made that more difficult as the racing's gone on we then get into this very very steep climb and it starts to rise here on the grass and uh, we saw in the women's race uh, it's becoming harder and harder to ride this this grass you have to kind of choose this right hand position before it's onto the gravel and then onto the asphalt for what is a very very tough climb it's about 20 percent on the back of the course you can see simon zana here really having to work hard to get to the top of this climb but it makes for a breathtaking run back down towards the arena as we have a very very steep technical descent to come it has been slightly changed from this from yesterday and you see Simon here just dropping in and it snakes its way down the hillside it's very very bumpy as well it's uh, been made a little bit longer on uh, that section and then uh, again snakes its way down towards the final twists and turns it's off camber as well a lot of riders struggling to stop themselves really sliding out on that section back onto the gravel through the uh, the houses and then it's back in onto a very uh, snaking section in towards the finish and this bark as well it's a bit of a running track and you can see simon here he beautifully hot, um, bunny hops from side to side but if we get a group coming in towards the finish and as we get towards the athletics track as well we can have some real fights coming in towards the finish of the men's elite race here this afternoon simon was really pushing it to the limits going around here probably as uh, christian will tell us in a moment close to a uh, race speed but you can see very tight again in towards the final uh, straight around the top of the athletics track and then it opens up for the finish so uh, we could have some real uh, some fights as we've had previously here in the EKZ tour but that is the course you can see the slightly modified descent and uh, Christian after yesterday and after the the junior race and with the rain falling the organization have just taken the steps to just make that top section just a little bit longer yeah the descent is now a little longer it makes it I would say a little less dangerous as it was before. It was bef uh, like a drop-in before, and now we have at least uh, kind of a straight before. But it's uh, off camber twice, but uh, and around the, the tree there, it's uh, it's very steep again and 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 bumpy. But I guess it makes it easier to ride as it was before. Before it was really just uh, if you're brave enough or not. And in terms of the, the course as well, that's, uh, we've got a great field ahead of us. Let's hear from uh, some of today's favourites. Uh, yeah, I would say uh, main favourite is for sure uh, Marcel Wildhaber. He's uh, the GC leader of the Ecoset uh, Cross Tour. Then we have Simon Son, the two Swiss guys, but also the mountain bikers like uh, Florian Vogel or uh, Lukas Flöckiger are in good shape and always getting ready for the nationals, which are only in a week from now. But also the foreign riders like uh, like Francis Moura or like the Belgian 
uh, Dieter van Turnhout are some of the contenders for, for today's race. And then we have uh, uh, the Italian rider, Aurelio Bertoli, which is uh, for sure one of the favorites. He's going crazy, uh, crazy in the descent, uh, makes it hard for the others if, if he gets down without the crash. So let's hear from some of, uh, we managed to catch up with a few of our uh, favorites for today's race. Let's hear from them now. Simon Zahner, gerade auf der Entdeckungsrunde, auf der Besichtigungsrunde, was sind die Erkenntnisse von der Strecke, die jetzt recht nass ist? Ja, es ist extrem viel schwieriger als gestern. Gestern haben wir jeder Kurve noch voll rein haben und hat Grip gefunden. Und jetzt ist alles wirklich so auf, ja, voll auf dem Messer schneiden. Du fährst in der Farbe vom EKZ Racing Team, EKZ Cross Tour, VC Meile. Es ist ein absolutes Heimspiel. Was macht das für dich aus, vor Heimpublikum zu fahren? Ja, du hast es gesagt, also es spricht eigentlich jeder Grund dafür, dass man irgendwie noch ein bisschen nervöser ist und ja, dass man noch ein bisschen mehr allwendet, dass du gut fährst. Und ja, dass ich ein bisschen probiere, auszublenden oder als Motivation zu nutzen, aber nicht als Druck. Der Schlüssel zum Erfolg gegen die starke Konkurrenz? Äh, ja, sehr viel Gefühl, weil die Strecke ist wirklich gestern noch extrem hart gewesen und heute ist sie sehr hart, aber, aber äh, da kannst du in jeder Kurve einfach überreagieren. Merci vielmals für den Erfolg. Merci. Merci. Marcel Wildhaber, letzte Minute vom offiziellen Training. Was für ein Gefühl ich dabei? Äh, ich dabei eigentlich gut. So habe ich mich jetzt noch nicht ganz so wohl gefühlt. Du hast eine Runde gemacht und es ist extrem rutschig jetzt mit dem Regen. Unten ist es eigentlich noch hart, aber oben drauf brutal schmierig. Und, äh, ja, man muss jetzt noch mit dem Luftdruck schauen, möglichst tief, dass, es, dass man wirklich möglichst viel Grip noch bekommt. Ja. Die eine Sache ist die technische Sache, die andere sind Konkurrenz. Es sind 47 Punkte Vorsprung in der Gesamtwertung. Welches sind die gefährlichen Männer? Ja, der Simi Zahner ist der erste Verfolger. Äh, ich weiß, wenn er gewinnt, muss ich mindestens achten werden. Dann habe ich den Gesamtsieg. Und von dem her ich mich, habe ich das sicher im Hinterkopf. Aber ich will eigentlich schon auch ein gutes Rennen fahren. Und sicher ist nichts. Äh, es kann, <lacht> heute wird es ein paar Stürze geben. Es kann schnell ein Defekt passieren oder so etwas. Und von dem her ja, einfach äh, Gas geben und, und das Geniessen probieren. Ein bisschen. Viel Erfolg. Dieter von Thurentown. First of all, Happy New Year. Welcome in Switzerland again. How was your trip from Belgium to here? Um, thank you. Uh, good. Uh, I have sleeping uh, tonight in Strasbourg, so uh, I just arrived. So uh, I see uh, the big, uh, the big mountain uh, behind me. So uh, I'm a little afraid, but uh, I hope I had uh, good legs today. And we will see. In Eschenbach, our last race, you had a big disappointment. You started as the leader. You had two mechanics and you stopped. Now we are in the overall, not in the position to win. What's your goal for today? Um, uh, first of all, I want to ride a good race. Um, I uh, have, have looked to the classement and uh, maybe I can be in the third place. Uh, so uh, that's my, uh, my, uh, my goal today, a good race. And um, maybe I can uh, take uh, Mouret in uh, the classement. You say Francis Mouret, he's one who is fighting against you. Who are the other names you think they are here to win? A uh, big favorite is uh, Clément Venturini, I think. And uh, also uh, the Swiss riders. Uh, I think Sauner and Wildhaber are uh, also good uh, this year. So uh, it's going to be a big battle. Okay, by the way, it's one less because Venturini is not here today. He is sick. So you have one chance more to win. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> it's good news for, uh, for us. Thanks. Huh? Uh, Thanks you you. Florian Vogel, we are in Meile. Was hast du dir vorgenommen für heute? Hauptprobe für, für zur SM oder lässt du es rollen? Ja, ich bin nicht 100% gesund und äh, werde darum einfach äh, gut durchkommen. Ich sehe so ein gutes Training im Hinblick auf, äh, auf, auf die Schweizer Meisterschaft in einer Woche und fahre aber nochmal ein Rennen am Mittwoch in Deutschland. Und von dem her ist es noch nicht die Hauptprobe, aber äh, ja, ich probiere sicher so schnell wie möglich zu fahren. Auf der Strecke nehme ich an, bist du schon so. Ähm, was meinst du zu der Abfahrt, Harakiri, oder ist gut zum Fahren, einigermaßen machbar? Ja, es war eigentlich cool, jetzt ist es nochmal umgesteckt worden, jetzt ist es noch etwas einfacher. Und äh, ja, ist sicher cool, gibt sicher spannende Bilder. Was erwartest du vom Rennen? Podest als Ziel oder wirklich einfach durchziehen, ohne Crash? Ja, für mich ist es schwierig zu sagen. Letzte, vor einer Woche bin ich recht gut gefahren, eher stärker als ich erwartet habe. 
Form, denke ich, ist äh, recht gut für den Anfang des Januar. Aber es ist halt recht stark besetzt und ja, ich habe auch nicht gerade die beste Startnummer. Darum muss ich auch auf einen guten Start hoffen und darauf, dass es vielleicht auch vorne ein bisschen taktisch ist. Aber mal schauen. Ich habe gesehen, du hast einen Haufen Schwellentraining gemacht in letzter Zeit. Ich nehme an, das wird dir helfen. Heute ist nicht so ein Rennen, wo man wahnsinnig spritzig sein muss, aber einfach durchziehen. Hast du das im Hinblick auf die SM so gemacht oder ist das rein nur im Blick auf die Mountainbike-Saison? Nein, das ist wirklich äh, als, vor allem für eine Mountainbike-Saison. Wobei, eben, wenn man halt so trainiert, wie ich das mittlerweile mache, dass man eigentlich das ganze Jahr Intensitäten einbaut. Und ich trainiere recht viel an den Schwellen. Und das ist etwas, das einem natürlich dann auch im Winter an den Wettkämpfen zu gut kommt. Weil man halt, denke ich, ja, näher an, an dem ist, was, was man kann leisten kann. Unter Topform und ja, ist so ein der neue Weg, wo, wo halt mittlerweile trainiert wird. Und ich denke, das ist sicher hilfreich für, für Wettkämpfe, die dann außerhalb der Saison liegen. Also dann wünsche ich mir viel Glück, Florian Vogel heute in Meilen. Danke vielmals. Christian will uh, summarise the interviews for you a little bit later. But here is our start list for you, Francis Moret is wearing number two, Clemma Venturini, who was uh, going to be wearing a number one, uh, sadly having to pull out. Sasha Weber, Simon Zana, Marcel Wildhaber, Gioele Bertolini, Martin Harding, Amarius Gill, Ludomir Petrus, uh, Wojciech Nippel, and uh, Dieter van der Touren uh, We've also got uh, Steve Chanel, and uh, we'll just go down, we'll pick out Lucas Winterberg, uh, Matej Lafag, Severin Sagessa, Brian Falaski, Lucas Flugiger, of course. Florian Vogel as well, got to pick out uh, him. Uh, Marco Bianco, uh, Andreas Moser, and then going down through our list, Michael Wildhaber there as well. Johan Jacobs, got to pick out the young Swiss rider there uh, as well. Lars Forster is uh, another rider that's uh, Christian's pointing out to watch out for today. Yeah, Lars is a very talented mountain biker, Swiss guy. Um, he is in good shape. He looks always good in the descents when it's crazy going down. Um, I expect something f to see from him as well as from Lukas Völkiger. He's not young anymore, but he uh, is definitely going to be in good shape at least uh, next week. So we'll just go along the start. So Francis Moret, uh, of course, changing teams for today, a vital concept. The first outing, we saw Ava Lechner earlier in the colours of uh, Luna Chicks. And there's our series leader, Marcel Wildhaber of Scott Odlo, he's in the green jersey. Simon Zana of EKZ. And then you have Sasha Weber, he is the next rider. You have Gioele Bertolini, he is a Salitalia Gracciotti. Steve Chanel is the next rider on the start. And then uh, next rider, number seven, Martin Haring. And then number 11 is Wojciech Nippel. He is the rider on the extreme left. So we're getting ready for the start of the fifth and final round of the EKZ Cross Tour. Thanks for joining us here today. We'll be bringing you this race in its entirety, around 60 minutes of racing around what is it's just over a 2.6 kilometer circuit. You've seen from our pre-ride, it is testing, the rain is falling. We have full on cyclocross conditions here in uh, Switzerland for you here today. The countdown is underway. We are under starter's orders. And we are away the deciding round of the EKZ across to Marcel Wildhaber in the green, streaks away from the start. Simon Zana of EKZ is just 47 points behind him in the general classification. And we're about to get to this very, very tight right-hander at the end of the athletics tag. Christian, this is an all-important section if you want to win this race. Yeah, we are the, the riders are lining up now, uh, going to the first uh, off-road um, section here. Um, we're going to see if they are able to still ride the corners or if they need to go down from the bike running. Next, next corner will be the one to see how Marcel is taking no risk here running instead of riding. 
So Marcel Wildhaber just uh, choosing to uh, jump off and run through the section. Again, it looks, uh, it's getting a little bit more cut up as the racing is going on. The tree roots have started to become a little bit more exposed. It's quite an off camber as well. In uh, Again, it, it, it switches as we go. And uh, we're going to go out and we got a rider down quite heavily. We've got a crash there on the left. Let's see who's gone down if we can. We'll give you uh, the top 10 overall in the EKZ Cross Tour. So we said, so Marcel Wildhaber leading with 275 points. Simon Zana with 228. Francis More with the 198 is in third. Dieter van Turentout is fourth with 197. Seven and Sagessa is fifth with 182. Steve Chanel is fifth with 179. He's in the cross team by G4. Gilele Bertolini, Clemo Venturini, David van der Poel and Clemo Russo. That is the top 10. But look, as Steve Chanel here streaking away from the start. Great start by the Frenchman. Yeah, he just um, catched uh, Marcel Wildhaber and he's really hammering through the pit uh, area, the first pit area, and now coming to the first barrier section. And yeah, he's just jumping. Same for Marcel Wildhaber. Simon Sonner as well, just behind them on third position. And you're saying after pre ride yesterday, Simon Zane, not normally someone that likes to jump the barriers, but he's kind of being forced, in, forced into it there. Yeah, yesterday it was, uh, it was way more bumpy as it is today, so that's probably why he decided to, to jump today and not running like yesterday. It's uh, now on the, on the very, very uh, hard uphill here. The f beginning is only slight climbing, and then it's really from, from, the, from the bush there, it's really steep, going steeper and steeper until the tarmac section. Steve Chanel just managing to find himself uh, some traction on the right there as Marcel Wildhaber just loses the wheels. They slide out from underneath him. So uh, Steve Chanel uh, just taking that right-hand line. That was uh, favoured a lot in the women's race by the riders that managed to uh, ride that full section. But uh, you can see here most riders uh, being forced off and uh, running. So uh, nice ride in there as well. Fabian Oberist goes through there. The previous round, Marcel Wildhaber, he, uh, as we said, leading with 275. Uh, it was quite a battle between him and Bertolini uh, at the finish. Quite yeah, a they, had a, they had a very tight finish in Eschenbach. Um, I don't expect to have it that tight here. Um, the riders are now in the tarmac uphill, which is uh, not um, captured by cameras, but uh, I see them already almost at the top of the climb, so it's only taking a couple seconds until they are live from the camera again. So let's have a rerun of our start. And the riders uh, just uh, streaking away from the start. Uh, Marcel Wildhaber, as we said, just opting to uh, get off and run, but Steve Chanel is already on the descent and uh, taking this a longer section in his stride. And this is where it can become a little bit more difficult. Uh, yeah, Chanel in the lead, uh, you could see in the last uh, picture, um, the, the rain is, is coming up again, pretty hard rain now, and we see uh, lots of crashes from, from our position. Uh, Chanel now takes the secure way and is running the descent while Frosty Mura is, is riding it, but his face doesn't look like uh, being too easy there. But he's still riding and you see he, he catched up about uh, 30 meters and just, uh, just uh, about the double of, uh, of, of riding. Francis More is uh, managed to take the lead from his fellow countrymen. But if you look at all oh, oh, riders down here, here. <laughs> back, if you look at the, some of the World Cups, uh, Francis More has won, such as Namur, right up on the Citadel. These are the sort of thing, these are the sort of descents that, you know, cyclocross rider like More just takes in his stride. Yeah, Murray got older the last years as well, so he's probably not that quick anymore out of the corners as in the past, but he's uh, definitely uh, one of the most powerful riders in the peloton and once he's uh, he's uh, going well his motivation is still there and his experience to win races is definitely uh, the, the biggest from all the riders here in competition so you can see the two frenchmen so uh, chanel and more 
And uh, this is some of the crash, some of the uh, one of the BMC riders just going down. So just while we get through this section, just summarise some of our interviews that we had at the beginning from uh, a couple of our favourites, Simon Zahner and... Uh, yeah, Simon Zahner pointed out it's, uh, it's really his home race. It's uh, He's racing for the EKZ racing team. Uh, it's a uh, race from the EKZ Cross Tour. Um, and it's his home race. He's... Uh, from the from the hometown uh, club uh, Velo Club Milan, and he pointed out that yesterday it was just hard and, and difficult in the descent, and today it's not only hard in the uphill but also crazy dangerous in in the downhill. And um, he also pointed out that he's for sure nervous because of this uh, hometown favor being hometown favorite. A uh, lots of people is uh, at the course for him. Uh, but he is excited and uh, is very much looking forward and hopes to gain a little power out of the of the pressure which is on him. So Francis Moret now just uh, heading back in towards the athletics track for the end of lap one, and we'll be able to get an idea on our lap times as Moret comes around. So he's on to the athletic step, just uh, takes himself a little opportunity to glance across at Chanel, but the, the gap's still fairly small at the moment. So uh, we'll count everyone through. He's just heading up towards the finish line this time. So you can see from the start, as we come back round on the second loop, everything is reversed. So More goes through the start finish line. He's uh, followed across the line by Steve Chanel. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll get time gaps, so just five seconds and then uh, a gap back to the group containing Clement Russo of Team Pro, uh, Pro Bike Shop, Marcel Wildhaber, Simon Zana and uh, Dieter van Turentout, uh, Giuelli Bertolini goes through. So they're just 10 seconds. Then at 13 seconds, uh, we've got a gap back to uh, Wojciech Nippel, Thomas Papruska, uh, Severin Sages, uh, Johan Jacobs and Florian Vogel as 24 seconds down at the moment. So uh, looking good, Florian Vogel doing a good ride up there at the moment as well 24 seconds off the lead yeah, and Mura is on his uh, style as in his best times just moves around the corners and then pushing the pedals again as hard as possible not watching back, just riding his own his own thing here so a little hand sling off the uh, corner there by uh, Wojciech Nikol goes through there so this is the as we said this is the 37th edition um, of this race first held on uh, back in 1934 was uh, held up on the hillside it's now come back down and there was a time in the early 90s where the new year's cross in Milan uh, had a had a habit of giving us a world champion straight after about a month later in 91 it was Thomas Frischnecht uh, who won in uh, Heaton it was then 92, Daniele Pontoni, who took the amateur title in Leeds, then Henrik Dernis in 93 in Corva, and then uh, Dieter Runkel in 95, so four out of five. So uh, great history and a good luck charm for, uh, for some riders. Yeah, and we had Swiss national championships here as well, twice. I was in one of those races too, finished only second. Tell us a little bit about that. I can't tell too much, it's too far away. <laughs> <laughs> History is history, yeah. as they say. Yeah. <laughs> Flora Francis Moret this time opting to run the planks. And so uh, just give you an update on the IKZ cross tour so far. So we started in Baden with, in round one, and that was taken by uh, Laurent Sveek. So uh, we've had a, quite a lot of the Belgian riders uh, coming down. As you see, Dieter van Turentout is here and uh, opting as well to come down and race uh, some of the Swiss races. Francis Mure uh, favours a lot the Swiss races uh, rather than racing in Belgium with his preparations for World Cups. So round one was taken by Laurent Sveek ahead of Philippe Valsleben with uh, Mure in third. So Francis is running all the way up now. It's like a 20 meter run up now. Coming onto a little part of uh, gravel it makes, it makes it hard to not get too many rocks in his cleats. Chanel almost on top with riding, rest of the bunch running. Zana going through your picture there for IKZ, Bertolini. And then uh, you're looking at the green there, Wildhaber. Van Turentout tried to uh, run his uh, ride for as long as uh, possible. 
Was that Lars Forster managing the team? Severin Segesser. Florian Vogel. Timon Rijek. The BMC mountain bikers. All there with uh, Fabian Leonhardt, former ACAT set racing team rider, now in BMC colors. Do you think as well as uh, mountain bikers, it's quite a course that might suit them? Uh, I guess so, it's uh, quite steep uphill which should suit the mountain bikers well and then the downhill, the descent is really more a downhill than a descent. It's quite crazy going down there, it should be good for the mountain bikers but uh, it's really a big, big difference handling a cross bike over these bumpy sections compared to, uh, to a mountain bike or maybe even a full suspension mountain bike slippery there and you can see how much rain we have now Mura is doing his thing as he was on his best times going smooth and powerful decent is Mure looking great as I said we're just bringing up to speed the other round so uh, Mure third on round one he was also third on round two in Dilsdorf which was taken by Clement Venturini out of uh, Dieter van Turentout in hit now it was David van der Poel took it ahead of uh, Sasha Weber with Simon Zana in a third and then Marcel Wildhaber Giuele Bertolini and Michael van Turentout so uh, at the top of the climb we'll just give you a rundown of our top 10 here at the moment 17 second gap and a big uh, off there by uh, Wojciech and also Simon Xander just crashed, Joely Bertolini crashed as well, you see it's so slippery there, almost looks like it's, it's a nice Simon Xander here, Bertolini already on his uh, only running and nipple here, almost face planted. So riders on these off camber twists and turns here, but uh, so as we say, proper cycle across conditions, that's Pro uh, that's cross, that's cross, isn't it? As we all say, it's cross riders. Yeah. I'll just give you a rundown of our top ten, the way it was sitting at the top of the climb. More ahead of Bertolini, Wojciech Nippel, Simon Zana, Thomas Patruska, Dieter van Turentau, Clement Russo, Steve Chanel, Marcel Wildhaber and Severin Sargesser. Uh, Johan uh, Jacobs is up there as well. Florian Vogel just outside the top 10 in 12th. Lars Forster, uh, Timon uh, Ruig and uh, Fabian Leinhardt. That's the top 15 at the moment, the way things are served. But uh, More is lapping as they are really, really quick here. It's uh, With that real steep climb in the back, he's uh, uh, taking it in his stride. Yeah, as I said before, he's still one of the most powerful riders and he was always a specialist of muddy courses. This course really suits him um, great. Doesn't need to be as, as quick uh, acceleration, doesn't have to be as quick as possible uh, anymore uh, out of the corners as in the past. So for him it's, uh, it's really, seems to be a great course. He's coming to the Athletics track again, accomplishes uh, his second lap. Quite, quite a big advantage for him. Murray coming around. So Murray, as uh, there's, uh, there is still uh, an outside chance that Murray could take the title overall um, if Marcel Wildhaber had a shocker at the back end of this race. So uh, we've just got somebody who's done a little bit of math. Um, if if Bore wins, Field um, Harbour must take the 23rd place to, to get the 24 points to give him the lead by one point. So uh, that's the way things pan out. But Field Harbour still at the back end of this group being led through by Zana. The group led by Zana and Zana uh, and Frosty Mura is doing very consistent laps. He had uh, 7 14 now and had a uh, the 7.16 the lap before, so very consistent lap times from him and very, very big group uh, just behind it. A7 riders all the way down until 8th position. Just as well, if you want to interact with us in the commentary box or keep track of some of the great stuff that uh, the race organizer putting out on Twitter, at EKZ Cross Tour. That's at EKZ Cross Tour. You can uh, interact with myself, Martin McDonald, 
or Christian Hoyle alongside me in the commentary box. So uh, there's some great stuff on there. There's some great maths that the guys are doing as well. So uh, you can get on there and uh, say hello to us here this afternoon. It's going out around the world. Yeah, and they have also a competition to win some jerseys and caps and uh, all the stuff from, from these one to win house. Uh, on the set for us to Twitter account and on Facebook. And uh, as well, you've got to, we've got to mention that uh, if people are confused, we've got a lot of changes in jerseys. Francis More changing teams, but for uh, the likes of uh, Dieter van Turenhout, uh, it's now Marlux. Napoleon games as well. They're now in this light blue. We've, we're used to seeing the, the team of them and Kevin Powell's in the red. It's become quite a traditional colour. Uh, they're now in the in the light blue. So uh, just to change a sponsor for them this year. Yeah, they have a sponsor change. Um, Marlux probably has uh, more blue in their in their uh, logo. More in control over the planks here. So. Uh, Again, on this course, you can see the real technical nature of this course. The gap going through the previous lap was 25 seconds for Francis More over Simon Zana. And uh, the gap really back is still within 30 seconds within uh, those top eight riders and only 38 seconds back to Johan Jacobs and uh, Florian Vogel. So uh, uh, on the on this course here, Christian, it's still, you know, anybody's game, isn't it? Because uh, a, a, a problem on any part of this circuit and uh, 25 seconds, you know, in cross terms can, can disappear. Yeah, it's, it's one bad crash on any place of the courses and uh, most of it is uh, most of it is gone from the from the time gap. Frosty Moura also is probably on his first race with uh, with the disc bike. Uh, I never saw him before on disc bike, but uh, the team change maybe also gave him the the possibility uh, to to ride with the disc bike. Now we see here different tactics to head towards the end of this uh, run up or ride up. Nipple is doing great while running and uh, riding, and the others are all all riding here, running. Marcel Wildhaber losing a little time here. Florian Vogel is catching up. Seems just to be there with the others. I suppose he will close the gap in the steep uh, tarmac uphill. So a lot of choices here. And uh, Severin Sargesser as well was, uh, was looking good as well. So uh, looking, up, looking good. Marcel Wildhaber. I had a good chat with Wildhaber yesterday and uh, he was saying I was having a chat with him about the World Cups. We've seen him in the World Cup circuit uh, over the years and he was uh, just saying that he's going to concentrate a little bit more on his cyclocross moving forward uh, and he thinks maybe uh, racing full-on mountain bike series uh, in the summer isn't uh, the best thing for a cyclocross racing. So uh, he said to me yesterday that he's... And More is down on the descent. And this is just what we said. Francis More on that tight turn. And uh, that, uh, that little off there by Francis More. We'll see uh, if anyone manages to uh, take advantage of that mistake. I think they can close the gap a little. They are now on 29, 30 seconds. The big group behind Frosimir, I think maybe five, seven seconds uh, closer now, but still he is still looking good and uh, at least halfway smooth there. Slipping around a little is just normal in these conditions. So one little off there on that descent by Francis Moret, the first uh, small mistake we've seen by the Frenchman so far. Yeah, Frosimura seems to have a little problem to get back in his pedals there after the descent. Oh, another crash from Simon Sonner. Bertolini is, uh, is really doing great this time in the descent, going quite fast. So the 20-year-old Italian, Gioele Bertolini, rides for the Celitalia Guerciotti team. So seventh in the recent uh, U23 World Cup in Zolder, two times a national uh, junior cyclocross champion, second in the uh, under-23 World Cup in uh, Namur as well. So a uh, lot of excitement around the young Italian as well, because uh, do with another young Italian uh, cyclocross champion. Yeah. Who knows? 
Yeah. Always uh, surprising what uh, Marco Aurelio Fontana doing for cyclocross nationals in Italia. If he is there, he's definitely one of the biggest contenders. If, if not, uh, the race is, uh, is wider open for sure. See Frosty Murray going into the uh, Vita Parkour section. It's a section which is uh, the ground is uh, made out of wooden parts um, to make it softer for running around here. I think for me, just seeing More, I, I love watching Francis More when when he when he goes like this. I think when uh, when he won in uh, his last World Cup in, in uh, Namur, you know, if you look at his career, he's had ten times national uh, French national cyclocross champion, four World Cup victories. He's had 107 career victories, Francis More. Um, so maybe we're seeing uh, the 108th here today in the colours of his new team. Yeah, he's, he's one of the most winning, or he was one of the most winning riders in the past. Um, I was up there also one time with like uh, 14 or 16 win, UCI wins in one season, but he is like, uh, do, did that uh, almost every year in the last uh, 10 years, so he's uh, really going to be one of the of the guys with the, with the most with the most uh, UCI victories in the career. So Francis Murray crosses the finish line this time and he's shown the lap board with five laps to go this time five laps to go for Francis Murray. Total of eight laps for the riders is now on a seven minutes 30 lap so 15 minutes uh, 15 seconds slower than the last two laps it's still going good Bertolini here coming next with uh, Simon Sauna trying to catch up Gioelli Bertolini of Cell Italia Guerciotti is uh, forcing Simon Zana and uh, Wojciech Nipple to work uh, rehard Steve Chanel still giving chase just three seconds off them but it's a 27 second time gap back from Francis More to uh, Gioelli Bertolini uh, they, when they were shown five laps ago so we'll just give you a rundown of the top ten the way proceeding stand at the moment Francis More of Fortineo Vital Concept leading for Gioelli Bertolini of Salitalia Guerciotti Simon Zana of IKZ Racing Team Wojciech Nippel of Pusinac.cz Steve Chanel of Cross Team by G4 he's in fifth Thomas Papraska of the uh, Express Cide Marida Team he is in sixth Sasha Weber of Champion System is uh, seventh Florian Vogel is in eighth then you have Dieter van Turenhout of Marlux Napoleon Games and then in 10th Lars Forster of the BMC Racing Team. So that is your top 10 standings here in Milan for the final round of the EKZ Cross Tour here at the moment. So we're having a look at the moment to see where uh, Wild Harbour is in the standings at the moment. He's not, he's not on the list anymore. He probably had a, a big uh, problem there. So we're looking for anyway, the anyway, we have uh, a gap of 27 seconds from Masi, from Frosi Mura to Bertolini, and then the, we have um, seven riders within 20, 15 seconds only in between those riders, which uh, makes it very interesting to see for for the next upcoming laps. More puts the pressure on once again and uh, this really uh, bodes well going on. Yeah, Frosty Mura seems to have a camera on his seat. We should maybe, get a little maybe, he, that. maybe he wanted to capture his, uh, his competitors but he uh, can't because he's uh, 27 seconds ahead of them. <laughs> it would have been good at the start. Maybe we could have, maybe we'd have tapped into that stream. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll have a chat for next time. He's running again and I hope uh, he, don't miss, he doesn't miss to, to clean up the lens from the camera on his seat. Yeah. Very exposed position for a camera in a, such a muddy race. It is. So as you can see again, uh, riders having to uh, change uh, the bikes are now onto the look bike of uh, the Fortuneo of Ita Concept team. And uh, as uh, Christian said, on to disc brakes now. It's always been something of a, a traditionalist. To Bertolini, 
the young Italian dismounts there. Chanel is running nicely onto the back, and also Simon Zana, who, uh, as I said earlier, I now have a personal contract with Simon Zana to be able to call him Simon Zana. Yeah. As I you still call him Simon. <laughs> <laughs> you got the permission to call him Simon. As uh, many people around the world know, it's, uh, it's, he is actually pronounced Simon Zana. And uh, he, like I said, you know, it's Simon in places, what should we call you? And he did tell me I'm allowed to call him Simon Zana. So uh, you check, his, check his Twitter as well for uh, uh, Simon Zana, and uh, you'll be able to follow him. So looking back here, so uh, that was one of his crashy couple of double crash that we had a little bit earlier. This is uh, More as well, just controlling that little double slide there that uh, he had and uh, this is uh, this is what happens as well. Nico Brunker, one of the roadies in the cyclocross, uh, struggles also this rider, barely able to run this descent. And sometimes when the feet are going out from under you, the, the best thing you can do is lean into the hill, isn't it? Yeah. I was always taught that running downhill, that the best thing you can do is lean into the hill, not away from the hill. And More is down again, a little dab there by Francis More, and that uh, top section again, that was where it was leveled off a little bit. Same place as the lap before, but I guess he's not really out of focus just because of this little slippery thing there. I think that's what we, there was one thing that we were saying yesterday and, and a lot of chat is if you make a mistake in a race such as this, the main thing is not to panic, isn't it? Because sometimes if you're on the back foot and you are crashing and you are making mistakes, it's going to happen on a course. So it's the main thing is just not to panic, isn't it? No panic in a race is always the best you can do. Just staying focused, staying calm and keeping your mind where it has to be is, is definitely one of the, the main uh, strengths a good rider needs to have. Uh, but make, makes it also easier with experience. With more experience it's definitely easier to, to stay in calm in race, even in very bad positions. Bertolini again going down pretty well, Simon Zahn running, Steve Shannon riding. We are seeing different styles of coming down. I think some riders um, had is still uh, is already the Swiss national championships or like their national championships held in a week uh, or tomorrow in a week, which are important for uh, most of them, at least for, for the big contenders. Johan Jakobs here, Dieter van Turnhout. Uh, both close together. So I'm just getting a little correction as well. Of, uh, it's uh, Choile. Choile. <laughs> Choile. My apologies. My Italian. I should give myself a, a collective slap on the back of the head for uh, my pronunciation. So Choile. I hope that's better for, for our, uh, our Twitter man. So uh, Francis More comes around once again. So as we said, get on to the uh, Twitter feed. Loads of competitions at EKZ Cross Tour. Loads of competitions. You can win that jersey of Dieter van Thunenhout. And uh, that new Marlux Napoleon Games jersey. But coming around at this time, Francis More is going to get four laps to go. And beautifully often on there, the, the uh, track. Just got some backside information from Marcel Wildhaber. He is out. He's out of the race after a crash. Uh, he had rumors about the uh, ankle injury possible, not confirmed yet, but uh, of course uh, bad for him because of losing the GC overall in only the last last uh, race of the of the series. That's a disaster for Marcel Wildhaber. Not the way anyone would want to see the see the, uh, the the series leader go out and uh, again he was really pushing it pushing it to the limit and uh, that again potentially here uh, More uh, is in sitting in third place at the moment so it's going to come down uh, if uh, Wildhaber is uh, out as they've said then uh, it comes down to a battle here uh, Simon Zana 228 so uh, it's about the, the backup team for Zana as well getting that information to him to uh, put as few places between him and More ahead of him but uh, here comes Gioele Bertolini through the start and uh, finish line uh, this time. Zana right behind him, so uh, Zana is tracking him, tracking him strongly. Sasha Weber is with him with uh, Steve Chanel. And then a little gap back to the next group. 
Florian Vogel here. Um, nice and it's to see here Frosty Mura is 15 years older than uh, Joelle Bertolini. Yes. Yeah, I mean, still 35 years young is uh, Francis More. And, uh, good to see Florian Vogel here. And Vogel is uh, riding on strongly as well. Florian Vogel now up to uh, now up to sixth place, the focus rider. And uh, he's been uh, national cyclocross champion. And he's been uh, European mountain bike champion. Sorry to remind you of that one. I'm told I'm not supposed to remind you that, that, that he's been Swiss cyclocross champion. Sorry about that. But, uh, you know, looking him back, his fantastic career, World Junior Mountain yeah. Bike Champion he's had as well. So, uh, and a uh, recent victory as well. So, he, you know, the mountain bikers are coming back strong here. He's only 14 seconds behind of, uh, of a podium position now. And uh, the race is still long. We still have uh, four laps to go. So only half of the course accomplished. So just to give you an update the where we are at the moment. So More leads by 27 seconds ahead of Bertolini. Zana is in third. Weber is in fourth. Chanel, Vogel, uh, Papraska is seventh. Forster is eighth. Sargesser is ninth. Nippel is tenth. Van Turenhout, eleventh. Jakobs, twelfth. Russo, thirteenth. Marikali um, from Axon Provence, fourteenth. Leinhardt, fifteenth. Uh, we've got a Stierneman is seventeenth. Ruick. 18th, Cominelli is 19th, and Marius Kiel is 20th. So the Polish rider in 20th spot at the moment. Morey has put uh, again on this climb. He's really using the sections of this course to his advantage. Always good on the power climbs is uh, Francis Morey. And uh, it's a shame we don't have a camera around the uh, on the road climb. But uh, as we've said, he's been a World Cup winner on the Namur Citadel. And he's uh, really using that power on that road climb around the back of the circuit to his advantage. Running that section, Bertolini. You know, they're trying to get the, the following riders captured by the camera. The whole, most of the most of the uphill in the grass. So uh, Weber goes now, and a uh, nice section there by Sasha Weber. Mm -hmm. Weber catched up a lot in the last two laps. Weber ahead of Bertolini, and then Channel and Son are still fighting for as many as possible points for, for the win in the GC. So Zana they get, potentially can take this series overall. The local rider, the pressure on Simon Zana, last winner back in 2008, whereas uh, the first, last time it was held here. So uh, if he could take the uh, IKZ cross tour overall, that would be good for him. Jan Jakobs here, big in picture with the new clothes from the new season, new year. Again, a very uh, another very uh, talented young Swiss rider is Jakobs. He's been riding well in uh, in the World Cups. Yeah, he, he needs to grow a little. He's in the youngest tier in the under 23 category, but he was up in the juniors top five on pretty much all the World Cups and I guess also in the World Championships. Uh, interesting to see now. Mure crashed twice in the round is three here and is now running this part. Doesn't want to crash again. And uh, maybe we get a little closer look to his face, how how focused he needs to be on, on this downhill and how, how bumpy it is to, to get down this uh, very steep. He's downhill. definitely looking a little bit more in control than he was on yeah, that opening he lap. Looks, he, he looks a little easier than before. I guess he knows about his, uh, his, his big gap to the second place. Which is uh, 30 seconds now to Sasha Weber on top of the hill. And then a uh, small gap back to Bertolini. Weber on the descent again. There's just a, the, the off camber as well. You can just see everyone trying to stop themselves just uh, sliding out. It's, uh, there was when it was when it was drier the, the sort of ability to just control your slide, but uh, now it's just trying to you know 
get down safely. Chanel places two, three, and four very close together. Everything open there. Everyone is trying to not make any mistake. Seems Simon Sonner had a little problem there in the, in the descent again. So Zana on the uh, the back end of this race here today, everything to fight for. He won't want to as well. There's the there's not only local pride being from this area, but also he won't want to see this series go to a Frenchman. Yeah, of course. Um, he wants to to keep the the Swiss money in Switzerland, and also um, get in the trophy of the overall series winner. He needs to calculate which position he needs to make at least to, to get the, the, the leader jersey ahead of, uh, of uh, Marcel Wildhaber. Marcel won't finish the race, but uh, Simon still needs a good uh, final position to, to be able to uh, get the overall win. We'll, uh, we'll do some calculations for you. So uh, we'll just uh, update on our Twitter feed as well is that unfortunately Marcel uh, Wildhaber is out of the race. He will come round this time with three laps remaining is uh, Francis More. An exemplary display of cross today from Francis More. The Frenchman goes through. So uh, again for the Fortunaire Vital Concept team. This will be a great start to the season for them. Very hard geared Francis Mura. He has about uh, 60, 65. Um, Pell per, per minute, which is almost the half of, uh, of Sasha Weber you see here. And even he is not really pedaling as, uh, as a roadie. It was something we said earlier in terms of using the, uh, the the arena to recover, but it's not that way at all. So going through at the moment, here's Simon Zani. You can see digging really deep here, the EKZ rider, the local man is uh, chasing Steve Chanel just in front of him. Simon Zana is sitting in fifth place at the moment, but it's 29 seconds at the head of the race that separates Francis Mollet from Sasha Weber. Choile Bertolini in third as uh, 29. Steve Chanel is at 41. Simon Zana at 44. And then it's 51 seconds back to Lars Forster of BMC, uh, mountain bike team Wojciech Nippel still up there in seventh. The Czech rider Thomas Papruska is still in 8th, 7th and Sargessa is 9th and Florian Vogel just uh, dropping to 10th this time but uh, Dieter van Turenhout is uh, hanging in there strong in 11th place and uh, just ahead of uh, his young teammate Johan Jakobs just 5 seconds separating him and uh, Jakobs at the moment. Yeah, Flo Florian Vogel lost... Uh, more than a half a minute in just one lap, so he must have uh, had a very, very big problem. We'll see what he's going to do, if he's trying to, to catch up again or if he's just uh, finishing the race and, and where he is. And definitely, as he pointed out in the, in the interview before the race, his main focus is not on this race, but on the mountain bike season. But uh, I know the mountain bikers well enough from my time as a, as a, as a racer. They always say, oh, cyclocross is only for training, it's only for training. But at the end, they are going all in in the races because they are races and they don't give anything away as a gift for anybody. So we said this is the fifth and a final round. Our overall leader, Marcel Wildhaber, sadly out after a crash. The first round taken back in by him by Lawrence Speak. Round two in Dielsdorf by Clement Venturini. Round three in hit, hit now by David van der Poel. The last round, a battle between them. Marcel Wildhaber and Charlie Bertolini and uh, Francis More has been on the podium many times throughout this one. And at the moment, the way this is looking when he comes around next time, 
time with two to go. It looks like Francis Moret could take the fifth and a final round, but will he take the general classification in this season's EKZ Cross Tour? Yeah, we'll see. We hear from uh, from Dieter van Thorn how he wants to try to catch uh, to catch Francis Mura in, in the overall, which seems uh, to be very impossible today. Uh, Sasha Weber here, he's he's moving up quite good. He had uh, for some reason a, a very bad start, which, which is unusual for, for him. Maybe a little tired legs from the Christmas period, too many races. You know. Slippery here for Steve Channel, even in the run-up running, uh, can't almost uh, be on uh, his legs anymore. Uh, I know we said it a little bit earlier, so, you know, excuse me if I repeat myself, but if you weren't with us earlier, and, and in terms of Swiss cyclocross, we're, you, were, you know, the Swiss are very well known for the mountain bike uh, scene again. You have such a massive history in, in cyclocross as well. You had such a, a fantastic career and, you know, you only retired four years ago you you raced the last part of your your career in the US um, but this season this scene this series and this scene is really growing um, and uh, Christian Rocha the the organizer was saying that he really sees this as a series for all the countries that are around Switzerland because of its position within um, within Europe without having to travel to all the way to the north to Belgium and I can say from you know from just being here today and this being the first time I've been here to the EKZ series I mean the course the organization the riders the way everyone's racing and, and seeing best riders in the world racing like this you know this is uh, again definitely you know the the place to come long may you know long may it continue it's you know it's been fantastic yeah we hear the uh, Pavla Havlikova in her uh, victories interview or for the overall victory uh, she is she was very surprised about uh, how cyclocross is in, in, in Switzerland. Uh, she was surprised about the venue. She was uh, venues. She was in, uh, impressed about the infrastructure on, on every race. And I'm sure, uh, on some point, uh, the Ecoset uh, Cross Tour will make it more interesting to foreign riders, just because. Uh, cyclocross in Belgium is more or less uh, held for, for the Belgian riders and not so interesting for most of the others. And there is another series now in Switzerland which is, uh, which is on very good level and um, with good money, which is not unimportant, uh, on nice venues and uh, you don't need to travel all the way to, to Belgium for Czech riders, it's easier to Switzerland, for Italian riders, French riders, most of the French riders for sure. Yeah, back to the race here, Lars Forster, one of the young guns, mountain biker, former European champion, I guess, um, Swiss champion cyclocross, very well in descent, and here Franci Mure, very strong here, hammering on the field through the second pit part, not giving away any second to this. We got to remember as well. There's still the, there's a French round of the World Cup to come as well. Um, you well, know, of so More, he, he'll be looking to to hone his form, uh, ready to try and you know to get another uh, victory in front of a home crowd in in a World Cup. Yeah, he's 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 more. I guess he's still motivated. He still has in his mind to to a world's, uh, another world's podium or maybe even the, the world champion title, which I think is, is probably not possible anymore for him, but uh, it looks like today he's back on his form from, uh, from, his, very best, uh, from his very best years. Coming now to the athletics track. So going through, they're going to get two laps to go. This time, More is on to the track. Steady. Sasha Weber is uh, was uh, behind him. We saw him having a couple of slides going now, but More now with two laps to go. This time, Francis More leads through. Two laps to go for the Frenchman. Two laps to go, and he will head out. He's got this race very much under control at the moment. 44 minutes and uh, 41 seconds of uh, racing so far. His last lap, about 7:35 for his last lap. Only five seconds slower than the lap. 
Mark Forger is still very consistent in his uh, lap times. Shows he's uh, still on the course with good laps, good, good legs, and focused enough to finish this race. Sasha Weber goes through next. And uh, he just crosses the line. So 32 seconds. This, uh, uh, Sasha Weber is really consistent here as well, mm -hmm. just ahead of Bertolini. Yeah, he's uh, he's doing the same lap times as, as Frost Moura. Frost Moura 7.35, uh, Sasha Weber 7.37. Of course, he won't uh, be fast enough for, for, for the win, but uh, anyway, he's, he's keeping up there. And we're getting a real charge here by Lars Forst, and now up to fifth place for the BMC uh, mountain bike racing team rider and uh, his lap times as well I mean he's uh, 739.4 was his last lap and uh, that's pushing Simon Zana down to sixth place at the moment he's just gone through the uh, finish line with uh, Wojciech Nipple and he's at 114 at the moment, Simon Zana. And then Florian Vogel goes through an eight, Paprisca nines and seven, and Sarges are rounding out the top 10 at the moment with Dieter van Thurenhout. And a little gap now, just back between them, Clement Russo and the uh, Johan Jacobs. As, uh, Chanel just goes out of the picture, there's uh, your leader here at the moment. So uh, for most of the race today, Francis Moray has uh, been very much in control. Over the planks this time for Moray. So you can see quite close together the planks. We had some, uh, some bunny hopping going on earlier in the race, but it's very, very muddy out there. Up through these turns, so he heads back on to the climb. He is uh, going to get quite a white welcome sound the next time he comes around. So uh, six laps completed so far. So he's still out there as well. We're just seeing uh, quite a few riders starting to get lapped now out on the circuit. More a dismounts once again for the steep run up. And each lap now, Mure not taking any chances at all. And here's Sasha Weber, and Mure is really charging down, glances across, and he wants the second spot on this podium, does the champion system rider. Bertolini was 13 seconds down on Sasha Weber on the, uh, as they went through start finish line the previous lap this is coming up to uh, lap adrian meyer sasha weber here in the uphill he looks very strong i haven't seen sasha weber look this uh, this good for quite a while so uh, starting no. the year nice and strong usually he's a specialist for for very fast races but he has the the good legs on today so as we said, proper cycle across conditions. These are the days when when you're when you're uh, proper in a cross rider comes out. Isn't it? Yeah, I haven't been on all the cycle cross races in Switzerland this season, but a guy told me this morning it's the first the first race the whole the whole cycle cross season in Switzerland where they need to to switch bikes really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like in the old days. <laughs> Pro proper. Proper cross conditions, as we say. So uh, we're getting a leader graphic here. It's not our leader here at the moment. Just going through there. One of our uh, back markers just been picked up. Francis Moray won't be far from there. And there he is. There's our leader. Just dismounted again, going through there. So uh, that top section. Again, Moray. And again, you can see... Uh, Although that the top of that descent was was stretched out, as you pull it that close to the tree, as we keep saying, as the tree roots become more and more exposed, there's just the, the surprises that just spring up um, as the racing goes on, especially when the corner's that tight. Isn't it? Yeah, the experienced riders they try they try uh, part two three times, and if they see it's too difficult, they just run it. 
to not lose uh, the time because of a crash and then they get up uh, on the bike as, as quick as possible anymore and it seems there is a there is a pretty good line after going around the tree to kind of uh, doing the whole uh, crossing the whole downhill and uh, having a straight right after Sasha Weber here in the very slippery part, lower part of the descent. So the German is uh, in second place here and uh, chasing that second spot on the podium nicely. Just controls there. You just saw Sasha Weber there just uh, breaking the back wheel, sliding it out behind him. Shows that that skill, that beautiful skill of a top cross rider as he just slid that back wheel out around that. Uh, uh, bottom turn just to control it. Where's Bertolini? There's Bertolini. Bertolini slipping around. And I guess uh, it looked like uh, Lars Forster closed the gap to, to position three on the race with Bertolini, Chanel, and now Lars Forster in third position. So we've got a nice Very little battle nice. emerging here for the third spot on the podium. And uh, Florian Vogel still uh, coming back as well, maybe uh, up there. And uh, Wojciech Nipple is uh, going through. with sixth on the previous lap. But Francis Moret is uh, on to the path. So if we get that group coming in for a sprint on the, the final lap, this uh, this section here is going to be particularly interesting. Yeah, for sure. For place two in the in the race here, Francis Moret seems already to be safe. At least if he's getting through the last uh, one and uh, a bit laps. No problem with his bikes. He, he will for sure win this race. Um, but um, position two, three and four, it's going to be very, very interesting. And we're maybe also going to see a nice sprint there, sprint finish. Francis Moray now heads back onto the athletic stack. He will get the welcome sound of the bell as he comes around this time, More is out of the saddle at the top of the athletics track. You can see he comes around into the finishing straight this time for the penultimate time. So Francis More who now has to just keep it up right on this final lap. Bell lap this time for More. So the leader goes through. The big question is, has Simon Zana, can he pull back any places on the final lap to try and take the series? A disastrous final ride by uh, for Marcel Wildhaber sadly crashing out the overall leader so where is the green jersey as the winner of this season's EKZ cross tour where is that going and Sasha Weber is chasing strong in second place Sasha Weber second position fighting very good consistent lap times now for him. So just 0.5 of a second slower than uh, More. So right on track with More ahead of him, Sasha Weber. 31 and a half seconds is the time gap between Weber and uh, More. More, you can just see uh, looking around, looking across, seeing where Sasha Weber is. There's Weber just going through your picture. Here's Bertolini. Bertolini gets a bell this time, and Forster is right behind him. Steve Chanel is there as well. Chanel goes through. And where is Simon Zana? Yeah, we had uh, Lars Forster in fourth position. Then Wojciech Nipple goes through. Zana's just gone through the start finish line this time. So Simon Zana has uh, got to keep himself up there in uh, terms of uh, points. 30 points separating uh, Zana and More at the moment in the general classification here in the Geza Cross Tour. Uh, we had uh, Florian Vogel next, and Dieter van Turnhout, Severin Segesser, Lukas Flöckiger also passed here the finish line with one lap to go. Um, with only a gap of, only gap of two minutes for him. Then Jan Jacobs coming next. 
It's category one race today, UCI cat one race today, so UCI points for the first 15 places, which, not, which is not uh, unhelpful for the, for the young riders to get a little bit better start position. They need to fight for every point to, to move up in the start grid. More on the climb once again. The Frenchman so so strong starts 2016 with a great form in those legs with the final rounds of the UCI Cyclocross World Cup to come. On to the run up again. So uh, the French uh, World Cup comes on the 17th of January, then the final one in Hugaid on the 24th. So uh, a couple of weeks for Francis More to uh, to keep and build on this form before he goes into his, his home round of the World Cup. You see Sasha Weber here, little smaller gear in the up, run up, uh, ride up, then down from the bike and trying to keep as much as more possible of the, his momentum to, to get up the run up. And you can see some of our back markers. There's a lot of fatigue uh, in this. It's a tough, tough course. Yeah, see how slick it is there. It's just lap after lap. That climb around the back of the circuit really uh, takes its toll on the legs. Just uh, snaps, of, uh, snaps off the legs each time. So now we got three riders vying for positions for the third spot on the podium. Lars Forster, Steve Chanel, and Wojciech Nipple. That is the, uh, with G uh, Cioeli Bertolini, my apology. That is the three riders now who are fighting for the third spot on the podium. Are we going to have a sprint finish on the athletics track? It could, we could well have that. That's the, uh, we said the, the scenario that we wanted going through this final section onto the athletics track if we could and a sprint finish maybe for third place. But here comes Simon Zana, the uh, home rider chasing here second overall in the general classification seventh at the moment for the EKZ team rider and uh, can he manage to pull back any riders in front of him one final big effort by Simon Zana could he pull back it could just take pull back maybe one place in front of him. just a few points could be uh, a big difference but More is on the descent once again. So the Frenchman heading back down towards the arena for the final time. As careful as possible, not risking too much anymore. He has a gap of 35 seconds, lead of 35 seconds over Sasha Weber, so he can take it little 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 easier so he'll be he'll breathe a huge sigh of relief now at the bottom of that descent Sasha Weber you can see here is uh, just a couple of turns higher up on the descent and there's the German and he's opting to uh, to run it this time so uh, not making any mistakes but uh, his legs going uh, from under him so uh, Sasha Weber here not very often seen running a descent and then having the bike shouldered I always prefer to have my bike uh, on the ground uh, to, to use it as a little bit, uh, keeping the balance a little easier. Yeah, we saw that with some of our back markers a little while ago, didn't we? The legs, the legs can just run, a, run away from you. You don't want that. I know he's trying to, in his head, think, I don't want anyone to come back. But look at this chase as well, because he doesn't want Lars Forster to pounce on him as well. So Forster is really uh, throwing himself down at this final descent in a chase of Sasha Weber. Bertolini and Nico Bertolini goes down Chanel runs past so Bertolini goes down on that final quarter shakes his head does the Italian yeah, a little, little too much risk in the last lap um, Forster, Forster is very well known to be rider with uh, good uh, last laps Francis More now heads in to the running section here. This is a little running track that they use, the bark, and he'll just uh, hop from side to side and uh, head in towards the athletics track. I just hear very, very, very bad news from Marcel Wildhaber. He, Marcel Wildhaber, he seems to have a broken angle from his crash, so absolutely 
Poor disastrous finish. So we wish him well. We really wish Marcel Wildhaber well. That's not what he would want, and uh, not what Francis Moray would want to if he takes the title here. But Francis Moray, what a great performance by the Frenchman. Start 2016 in emphatic fashion. Francis Moray rounds the final turn, sits up, salutes the crowd. A victory here in Milan in round five of the EKZ Cross Tour. Francis Moray takes it for Fortinaire Vital Concept and the race goes to France. And it's followed by his son to give him the clothes, the dry clothes for the the podium later on. And here comes Sasha Weber, a great performance by the German as well from Champion System. And he rounds that final corner as well. And he comes on second spot on the podium here today for Sasha Weber of Germany. Great performance by him. And where is third place? We saw them coming down the descent. We're looking around, and Foster is onto the track. Is it going the way of the BMC rider? It looks like it is. And Lars Forster, what a race he has put in today by the BMC mountain bike racing team. A rider threw himself down that final descent, takes the third spot on the podium. Third goes to Forster. Wojciech Dippel takes four. C Chanel takes fifth. That is your top five. C Chanel takes sixth. And a great race we have had here this afternoon in Milan. Hope you've enjoyed that around the world. Make sure that you uh, stay with us for our podium presentations and you better hear from our winner as well. We'll uh, just count them down. Charlie Bertolini in sixth. Simon Zana takes seventh. Florian Vogel in eighth place. Deed van Turenhout takes ninth. Uh, seven and Sargas uh, takes tenth. So one hour, 12 minutes and uh, one hour exactly. 12 seconds is the time of Francis Moray seven minutes and 50 seconds that final lap for him he takes it uh, by 34 seconds ahead of Sasha Weber and Lars Forster at uh, one minute and a three we got the point standing for the overall classification Frosty Moore snaps the overall victory with 289 points just ahead of Simon Son with 284 points on third position, unconfirmed, uh, Steve Chanel, another French guy, last year's winner, um, Clemo Venturini, not at the start today because of a sickness, um, but um, Frosimura really had a great race today and is a deserved winner of this uh, first edition on the new course of uh, the EKZ Cross Tour in Milan. Great, it really has been a spectacular day's racing. Have again, don't forget, you can go back and uh, and watch the women's race uh, as well. You can go back and watch that. That's there for you to watch. So uh, make sure you take advantage. We haven't given any spoilers away. So uh, if you do want to go back and watch that, go back and check that out now. So we'll count you down from at uh, 10th. So uh, 11th, 7th in Sargessa, Tom and Paprska, uh, 12th, Johan Jacobs, 13th, Clement Russo, 14th. Anthony Marcale 15th, Fabian Leinhardt 16th, Marius Gill in 17th. That's the uh, top 17 at the moment. So on the 18th, Lucas Winterberg. And uh, as soon as I get 19th and 20th, I will uh, give you those and we'll give you our top 20 overall. Matthias Sternemann 19th, and Martin Haring takes 20th. So that's the top 20 overall. Here we go. Here's our top 10. So Francis More takes that head of Sasha Weber with Lars Forster in third at 104. Wojciech Nippel takes fourth. Steve Chanel takes fifth. Uh, Joely Bertolini sixth. Simon Zana seventh. Florian Vogel eighth. Lucas Fluckiger there takes ninth. Dieter van Turenhout takes tenth. 
So Lucas Flukiger came through strong there as well. So uh, a couple of the BMC mountain bike riders putting that uh, skill, as you said they would, to uh, good use. Yeah, I guess a good, uh, good nose for this, uh, for this uh, result with, uh, with uh, Forster doing well, with uh, Flukiger doing good, Vogel did well. And um, yeah, all the mountain bikers are they are getting in contention for for nationals in, in a good week. See here the other way to clean your face on the on the pit. <laughs> it helps he, with your kit as well, doesn't it? Give you uh, give yourself a quick power at least, wash. At least he doesn't use the power washer for his face. <laughs> It does, uh, if you get your kit clean as well yeah. that way, it does save your washing machine at home sometimes, yeah. doesn't it? But I, I don't know why he cleaned his shoes before <laughs> he's uh, going through the mud now here again. Needs to clean the shoes again. Anyway, he's healthy. Not un unlucky like Master Bildhaber with, uh, with a broken angle today, second or third lap only. Yeah, I mean, we that we really wish him well, so uh, our hearts go out to Marcel Wildhaber. That's, uh, you know, disastrous start to the year. We really uh, wish him well. I hope he uh, recovers quickly and, uh, and heals fast. I still hope it's not as bad as it uh, as the rumours go now. Uh, broken bones are quickly uh, uh, recognised, but uh, I hope... Uh, Pictures made in the hospital or so will confirm something less um, bad for him so he can finish the season and of course uh, getting um, in running shape again for upcoming weekend. So Dieter van Turen how? Cleaning his own bike off there? Yeah, that's for sure unusual for a Belgian ride. As usually they go to the mobile home, drop all their clothes and then they have about uh, 10 people staying around the mobile home and cleaning uh, bikes and wheels and shoes and clothes and everything and they take a warm shower only a minute or two after finishing the race. But it's nice to see Guys like Dieter van Turnhout coming to Switzerland and uh, trying something else here, even if it is uh, probably not as easy for them as it is in their home country. I mean, he said it himself on in his interview before the start that, you know, this hill, this is very, you know, you know I know we, we talked about the, the, the sort of Nemur sort of World Cup course, but he said this is quite an unusual sort of course for him. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I know he comes to Switzerland. The first thing he sees is uh, is the is the course on a climb, which is uh, of course they have some climbs with uh, Copenberg or Gavre or or other races in Belgium. But uh, he had uh, he did Eschenbach and was surprised about the descent. And now he's in Milan and he was surprised about the uphill and downhill again. Uh, probably. It looks for him now, it's, uh, it happens on almost every race in Switzerland. Yeah, so uh, if you've enjoyed, I hope you're on our, uh, our coverage here today. Remember, uh, follow uh, at EKZ Cross Tour on Twitter. Keep track for, uh, hopefully, for next winter, where we'll uh, be able to come back and bring you more. But, uh, if this is your first view of cyclocross, I hope you've enjoyed it. If it's your first view of Swiss cyclocross, as you can see, uh, you got some of the best riders in the world. We had it in our women's race earlier on today. We had some of our best up-and-coming young riders coming through as well, as we've had here uh, in our elite men's race as well. So, uh, you know, really hope you've enjoyed that. I know the riders are just getting themselves cleaned up for the podium. You can just about see um, the, uh, the lake in the background, but this is our overall standings here um, of the series. Okay. So, uh, given Marcel Wildhaber at the top, this is, uh, we'll give you, uh, we'll check that one out. That was before going into the, uh, that was going into today's. Yeah, we definitely have further information here. With uh, Frosty Mure as, uh, as overall winner with 298 points ahead of Simon Sonner uh, with 284 points and then Steve Channel 239 points. Oh no, there is Dieter van Thornhout with 247. So Dieter van Thornhout on third position and uh, Channel probably on fourth position. 
But anyway, we have some, we'll have some final classification, confirmed final classification for you within a minute or two. So you can see all the riders just getting themselves cleaned up. Thanks for all your uh, your tweets as well and uh, interaction on the EKZ Cross Tour. Remember, get get on there as well. You'll be able to. Uh, there's competitions that you can win as well. So. Uh, Get on there. There's uh, been lots going on. Uh, our guys that are running that Twitter feed have, uh, have done a fantastic job on that. So uh, good job on there. So uh, check it out. So we're going to have a quick interview with Lars Forster of the BMC Mountain Bike Racing Team. Lars, Lars, herzliche Gratulation. Wirklich eine riesen Überraschung. Platz 3 EKC Cross Tour in Meilen. Hättest du das erwartet heute Morgen? Erwartet nicht, aber ich habe es erhofft. Ich habe mich wirklich gut gefühlt. Meine Form geht steil aufwärts jetzt. Nur ein bisschen auf die SM an, ist tiptop. Und heute hat einfach nur Spass gemacht. Es war richtig schwer. Du sagst, es ist richtig square werden. Ab welchem Moment hast du gemerkt, ich kann aufs Podest fahren? Uh, ja, ich habe eigentlich äh, nie einen richtig großen Abstand gehabt aufs Podest. Die Fahrer die vorne nie mehr gesehen. Eigentlich habe ich immer versucht, ein bisschen vorne zu pushen. Bin aber auch mehrmals am Boden gelegen. Aber ja, nachher dann sicher in der drittletzten Runde habe ich gesehen, ja, ja es liegt drin. Merci vielmals, Gratulation. Merci. Little Muddy. Lars Forster, just the head of the podium ceremony. He hoped to be good today, but didn't expect the podium finish. He also said his, uh, his form is uh, strong, coming better and better, and he's uh, in perfect um, form for becoming perfect form for Swiss nationals, and he's looking forward for nationals. And let's uh, quickly go across and hear from today's winner, Francis Mure. Francis, félicitations, une grande victoire pour toi. Et je pense que tu es vraiment content avec ça. Ouais, aujourd'hui, je suis content. Je suis très heureux d'avoir gagné aujourd'hui le Cycle Cross de Mielin pour moi et aussi pour ma nouvelle équipe, Fortunio Vital Concept. Et... Aujourd'hui, ben, je peux encore faire une saison avec eux et j'en suis très, très heureux. Je remercie cette équipe, Emmanuel Hubert, de me faire confiance euh, cette année. J'espère euh, leur apporter encore des, des succès. Aujourd'hui, je suis très content. Est, cette victoire est, est très bien. Elle est pour moi. La forme est bonne. Et la semaine prochaine, c'est le championnat de France. Et cette victoire euh, donne euh, entièrement confiance pour moi. Et... Et c'est pour remercier aussi tout, tout mon public, tous tout ceux qui, qui croient en moi, ma, ma nouvelle équipe, et j'espère qu'il y en aura d'autres. Des impressions du parcours, c'était vraiment dur, non Ouais, c'était très dur. Euh, hier, j'ai couru au Luxembourg, c'était aussi dur qu'aujourd'hui. Aujourd'hui, c'était très dur. J'appelle ça des cyclocross à l'ancienne, c'est les cyclocross que j'aime. Euh, les cyclocross, on va dire, euh, maintenant, qu'on qu qu nous, qu nous propose, c'est beaucoup des beaucoup des vire, vire des relances autour des piquets, alors qu'aujourd'hui, bah, c'est vraiment très dur, c'est... Des crosses à l'ancienne, comme je les aime bien, des, des constitutions très difficiles. Aujourd'hui, je suis très heureux d'avoir gagné. Marcel Wildaber, le leader, il est tombé, il est blessé. Maintenant, c'est toi qui gagnes l'overall de l'Ecassot Cross Tour. C'est la victoire du classement général. Qu'est-ce que c'est pour toi C'est important Ouais, c'est important. Je ne savais pas, tu me l'apprends, que j'ai gagné le KZ. C'est pour moi euh, ce que vous réalisez ici avec euh, le KZ Tour. Euh, c'est fantastique, c'est une très belle épreuve. Euh, L'année passée, je crois qu'il y avait quatre épreuves. Cette année, il y en a cinq. Vous avez un, un très beau plateau. Vous proposez des très beaux circuits, des organisations. C'est au top. Moi, que, quand je vous vois, l'organisation que vous avez, vous, en Suisse, et j'espère qu'en qu France, on peut euh, avoir un aussi beau challenge. On a, on a un très beau challenge avec euh, le cycle, la France cycliste. Mais malheureusement, on n'a que trois épreuves. Vous en avez cinq. Et nous, nous, les coureurs français, on se bat pour, euh, pour avoir, essayer d'avoir 5-6 euh, épreuves euh, chez nous en France. Vous, vous y arrivez, vous avez une très belle épreuve. Et aujourd'hui, accrocher le casé de tour euh, à mon palmarès, euh, j'en suis super, euh, super heureux. Et, et voilà, j'en suis super content. Et j'espère que l'année prochaine, je reviendrai pour essayer de défendre mon maillot. Félicitations, bravo. Maintenant, nous sommes prêts pour la cérémonie. 
Shall I let you have a go at translating that one? Yeah, <laughs> French is not my favorite language, but... He's uh, talking a bit <laughs> quick for me. Uh, at least I got a little of his uh, phrases. A little spite. Uh, no, he was, uh, he's uh, super happy with his victory and he's also have thankful to his uh, new team and says he's... Uh, He's uh, super satisfied to bring already a victory in the second day of the new year for his for his new team. Uh, also, he compared uh, the EKZ uh, Tour, EKZ Cross Tour, with the French Cycle Cross Cup, and uh, thinks it's a, it's a good platform in both in both uh, in both countries to to grow to grow the to grow the to grow our sport in 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 each of the countries. Fantastic! And here is your general standing, as you saw. So just confirmation there. Francis Moret taking the series of victory. And uh, after Marcel Viltarba crashing out, uh, we do hope that uh, the injuries aren't as bad as have been reported. But we are on to the podium. And in third place today, or in the EKZ Cross Tour, Lars Forster of the BMC mountain bike racing team. And uh, he said he had fun, spoken like a true mountain biker. So uh, great days racing for him. He didn't expect to be on the podium, but a well-deserved podium a place for Lars Forster after that ride in real difficult conditions here in Milan. Second and for Sasha Weber here on just finishing the race. Sasha Weber pushed his strong. His lap times were really, really good on par a lot of the time with Francis Moray. And uh, he takes a, uh, a very strong and well-deserved second place uh, in uh, Milan today for champion system. And here he is, Sasha Weber. Full neon clothes. Can never have too much neon. Nice flowers on the second day of the new year. Last but not least, Rossi Mure. All races announced by Christian Roche, Rocha, director of the EKZ Racing Tour. Has done a fantastic job, Christian Orso, over the last two seasons to bring this and build this series. And now we're streaming it live around the world. And there is your winner, top step of the podium today for his new team, Fortunel Vito Concept, Francis More of France, takes the victory here in the AKZ Cross Tour. Also on the podium, Thomas Scheurer, director of the local organization with a nice trophy. I think I saw it something out of chocolate. I'm not sure, but it looked like it's uh, something nice out of chocolate. Chocolate trophy. Chocolate I'd trophy. Expect it, I'd expect nothing else as an yeah. outsider. <laughs> There you go, one more time, there's your one, two, three, Francis Moray, Sasha Weber, and a last four star. And we will now see the presentation of the green jersey as the series winner. And uh, Francis gives his uh, flowers and chocolate to his helper. Best backup team you can get your kids, isn't it? <laughs> My kids in the first row here, podium ceremony, almost looked like they are waiting for me, <laughs> as in the past. <laughs> and there is your series winner, so pulling on the EKZ Cross Tour final green jersey of the series. Big handshake, there is your series winner, Francis Murray. Und das war der Schluss für uns hier auf der Tribüne. Wir sehen uns später in der Tribüne.
Well, all I can say is what a great day's racing we have had. I hope you have enjoyed it around the world. I'm sure you'll join me in thanking Christian Hoyle, his first uh, time in the commentary box. What a fantastic job he has done. I'm sure you'll thank me for his expertise and his insights. So from me, Martin McDonald, Christian Hoyle, alongside me, have a fantastic day. We'll leave you with the highlights. Bye for now. Thank you very much for watching us.